Although we don't only we don't have to only speculate about that because there's been enough experimental work done now with with hallucinogens and psychedelics to indicate that the notion that what they produce is something that's only akin to pathology is wrong. It's, it's not a matter of opinion at this point in the sequence of scientific and historical investigation. In fact, there was a large-scale study done of 200,000 people who had experimented with psychedelics and they were mentally and physically healthier than people who hadn't on virtually every parameter they examined. In fact, the rate of flashbacks, you've heard of LSD flashbacks, mostly a hypothetical phenomena, but the rate of self-reported flashbacks was higher among the non-psychedelic users than among the psychedelic users. So that was very interesting, it was a huge study. Now it might be, you could say that those who had experimented with psychedelics were prone to be healthier to begin with. But that still contradicts the pathology argument, so it doesn't matter either way. The pathology argument is contradicted. So users of psychedelics are allegedly healthier on everything than non-users. Uh, I just want to tell the average person, you know, that, that, that this is being pushed by the globalist. And some people are going to have good experiences, some are going to have bad, but the Bible says don't take part in pharmacia. Rick Strassman wrote a book on his experiences giving DMT to a whole bunch of people down in, he was at, in Austin, I think. And Strassman's a pretty straight scientist. You know, he was interested in measuring psychophysiological responses to the drugs. Well, he'd give people DMT and they all came back with the same story. I was blasted out of my consciousness. I went, I met a whole bunch of alien beings. Uh -huh. They were really surprised I was there. <laughs> and then I came back and it was the most real thing that's ever happened to me. And Strassman would say, well, you know, well, you had a Jungian archetypal experience or it was a dream. And they'd say, you don't you understand. Yeah. And he got so distraught because of these continual reports that he had stopped doing the research. Yeah, and it, like, I'm not making a claim for, a, for anything metaphysical here, but I'm definitely pointing out that there are undeniable realms of human experience that involve religious experience and a sense of the infinite transcendent that look like they're healthy and that you cannot deny. Yeah. Well, so what are you supposed to do with that? You, well, you, you so put they... it in a box and you say, well, we're not going to pay attention to it. It's like, that's not going to work. But who is putting psychedelics into a box? Certainly not you. Dr. Peterson. Peterson is alumnus of McGill and Harvard University, two centers of starting the drug revolution in the 60s and intelligence agency mind control experiments. At McGill he worked as postdoctoral with Morris Dombier, the then director of the Allen Memorial Institute, where the Montreal experiments on unsuspecting human lab rats were conducted as part of the infamous MKUltra. CIA project. At Harvard he held the exact same position as Timothy Leary. That Timothy Leary, a fact Peterson himself acknowledges. Um, on the East Coast it was Timothy Leary. I had Timothy Leary's old job at Harvard. So that was kind of cool, you know, warped way. I had Timothy Leary's old job at Harvard. So that was kind of cool. So it can be said that Jordan Peterson is the Timothy Leary of this generation. Whether or not Peterson is conscious of it, despite all of his fame and wealth he is allegedly not able to enjoy it. He seems to be in Russian medical care for addictions and psychological issues. The devil never pays out. The devil's greatest trick was convincing the world he didn't exist. The entire power structure of the world is satanic. This world government system is targeting Christians by design and creating a world cashless society or world social score where conservatives, nationalists, Christians, and others who won't allow their children to be indoctrinated into the world government system will be targeted and their right to buy and sell taken away. Prophecy is being manifest. In summation, there is a God that created the universe that wants us to use our free will to choose to join him. But we have been given free will. We are the seed of the universe. As Gandhi said, incredible potential. We're made in the image of God. So we can choose to go with the devil. It's true, God created the devil and has allowed the devil to be our tester. This is real. This entire life is only a flash. It's boot camp. It's a test. Faust 
many historians now believe did exist. But regardless, the legend of Faust gives us the keys to understand what's happening. Faust could have gotten out of his deal with the devil anytime he wanted. The devil didn't give Faust all those skills. God gave Faust and all of us gifts. The devil is older than us and is able to show us some of the gifts and convince us that he gave us the gifts so we believe we are trapped and under his control. It's a giant fraud. These people that serve Satan have been deceived. And that's why they later learn it isn't about money and power. It isn't about being cool or being a great poet or an artist. Once the devil tricks you to become his slave, then you must carry out evil against the innocents or the devil will use his worldly power against you to bring you down. That's why Christ said, when I am in you, the world will hate you and will come after you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a test. This is real. And those of you that have served Satan can leave the devil anytime you want, but you've got to allow God's spirit to come into you. And God doesn't do that unless you ask God in. Humble yourself before God. Go to the quiet place of the Most High and ask for the Holy Spirit to enter your body. You should not fear he who can take your physical body away, but he who can damn you to hell for eternity. Don't make the wrong choice. Renounce Satan. Join Christ. The devil's real, but Christ is real. You're real, and your free will is real. Make the right decision and join God in eternity. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, let me explain quickly what you need to do to go to heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. We've disobeyed the Creator. We've, we've done wicked things. We're sinners. Some are worse than others, at least in man's eyes, but we've all broken God's laws. And the Bible says you have to repent. The word repent means to turn. It actually means two things, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. God's looking for a change in your attitude where you say, Lord, I don't want to do wrong anymore. I'm sorry, I've offended you. I want to do right. And you turn from sin and you turn to God and say, God, would you please forgive me? Would you save me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to admit you're a sinner. Number two, the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. But Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. And anybody that will ask him for the free salvation, God will give you the gift of eternal life, it says in Romans 6.23. It's a free gift. And it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just call and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, would you please forgive me? And ask him. He will give you that free gift of eternal life. Why don't you just pray with me right now and you could receive Christ as your Savior. There's no magic words. God's looking at your heart. But if you could say this and mean it, God would forgive you. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please apply your blood to my account. Forgive my sins and take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, if you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. So if you've asked the Lord to save you, He promised He'd save you. Now your job is to grow. Read your Bible, pray, get involved in a good Bible-believing church, and begin to grow to be a good Christian. Thank you so much.